Hello and welcome to another edition of Payday TV. I'm Dominic Piper. Today I'm joined by Blackstone Minerals Managing Director, Scott Williamson. Scott, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Tom. Scott, you've just put away a big placement and, and capital raising of $21 million and that's your uh, Tacoa project in Vietnam. Can you tell us how that came about? And I was particularly interested to see that the fact that you've got Fidelity International in there taking an $8 million placement. You must mm. be really happy with that. Yeah, it, it's, oh, it's great to bring on a big name like that, one of the biggest institutional investors in the world. So uh, how it came about, they, they approached us. Um, they, they basically said, yeah, we want to we want a cornerstone, a, a, a p position in the company. And, and um, they, they actually tried to buy a market and it didn't work very well for them. It, um, pretty tight register so uh, yeah so they came and approached us and and with a name like that you you just got to take it and um, yeah and so yeah we're looking pretty good now so yeah it's um, yeah great exciting time for, for Blackstone. How much money does that leave you within the kitty now? Yeah so it takes us up to 28 maybe even 30 million depends on the SPP take up but yeah it's a it's a good um, I suppose yeah it's a good good war chest I suppose we can really do some stuff Drill, do a lot of drilling and and keep on um, studies as well. So and the wider support for the wider SPP. You're seeing a lot of investors kicking back in again. Yeah, they're coming. Yeah, so um, it, it's obviously put a bit of a, a bit of pressure on the price, but it's um it's it's important that we give the um, retail punters a bit of a um, I suppose the same the same deal. So yeah, it, it, it will be well well supported. Yeah. The the success of the raising and Fidelity coming in obviously points to the to the progress you've made in the last 12 months in particular. I was looking at the latest presentation and of course you've got, uh, you make mention there of the fact that you have EcoPro for Korea's uh, largest uh, nickel cathode manufacturer on uh, supporting you now. How important is that to have somebody locked in when you're looking at uh, various strategies for, for finding markets for that nickel sulfide? Yeah, so we bought EcoPro in the, the previous capital raising. Um, they, they paid a premium to the market they're not in the game of writing small checks. So they, they're going to write a big check and it's going to be um, basically half of the capex required for the downstream processing. So um, they're very focused on, okay, what's that next stage look like and, and how do we go and build this together? So they bring obviously funding, but they're also bringing some of the best battery chemical engineers in the world. So they're bringing technical expertise as well as the funding and, the, and so it's a true partnership going forward. And yeah, really, I suppose puts us ahead of the the pack. Really, we're 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 going to be producing downstream products for the lithium ion battery industry, which a lot of our peers talk about. But we're actually going to do it. It's exciting, yeah. It's a big leap for an explorer to start talking about downstream processing, but having a group like that on on board is is pretty impressive. To be able to do downstream processing of battery materials, you need something to start with nickel sulfide, ideally. And that's your uh, Tacoa project in Vietnam there. You, you do have some nickel sulfides to begin with. But what's the plan there? Are you looking to extend the resource? Yeah, so we've, got, we've just drilled out the Ban Phuc disseminated. We're still drilling the King Cobra Discovery Zone. All that will be wrapped into this, this scoping study, and that's coming out in the next few weeks. So, yeah, it's, it's expanding that resource, but we've got enough in that first ore body to, to really cr crank it up. So... Yeah, we'll show those numbers and we'll actually show the market what it looks like in a downstream process. So it's a pressure oxidation autoclave, it's, um, it's a mixed hydroxide precipitation moving it all the way through to the nickel cobalt manganese precursor that goes into the battery. So we're actually going, with EcoPro, start that first stage of the cathode which they call the NCM uh, precursor which is this NCM811 precursor. We, we will actually build that in northern Vietnam with EcoPro. So, yeah, it's, it's great because they're bringing their expertise for that and, um, and we bring the nickel and the ability to concentrate the nickel in, is obviously a really important factor for sulphide uh, opportunity. So we get to float the concentrate and 95% and of the ore body goes to the tailings dam and only 5% goes through that downstream process. So it's a fairly small process that we're talking about. It's not a billion dollar HPL plant mm. uh, like some of our peers. Uh, how's the reaction been from the Vietnamese government? Are they eager to see project, projects like this developed in the country? Yeah, so they've been incentivising downstream processing for, a lot, for many years now. So they've actually got a tariff on concentrate. So the idea being we build the downstream process, we remove that tariff. The previous owners at the mine actually paid that tariff. Our plan is to not pay that, bring in Echo Pro, build the downstream together, remove the tariff. So the government is 
they're very happy that we're doing exactly what they want. They want us to create jobs. They want us to create a new industry. They want us to, to yeah, create value in country. So we've got the hydro power plant, so we've got the renewable power. It will be green nickel. We're going to put Vietnam on the map, and that's exactly what the government wants. So we're, they're, they're, they're rolling the red carpet out because they know that we can deliver something that no one else can in, in the world. Scott, it's an exciting time. The challenge now is to hit those hurdles and those milestones. Can you just lay out for us where you're looking to, to go from here? When can we expect resource and scoping study and so forth? Yeah, so we've said Q3 for resource and scoping study. It might be a couple of days late, but that's okay. So Q3 scoping study, so very close now, just wrapping a bow around it, so we're ready to send that. Um, PFS Q1 next year, um, we want to add resources to that, so there will be a, ma a maiden resource in this scoping study. We will add further resources, so we're looking at Ban Chang, um, Ta Kung, and now we'll also look at Ban Kwa. So we want to wrap more resources into the PFS in Q1, and then all the way through to a bankable study in late in uh, 2021. 20, and then moving back into well, development in 2022 and then delivering the downstream products in 2023, which is where this supply crunch is going to come. You mentioned the supply crunch there. We've seen uh, Tesla have their EV, uh, their batteries there this week. Are you excited? Are you still confident about the future of the EV market? Yeah, very excited. Um, the, basically, what he's outlined there is that he needs the whole world's nickel supply just for Tesla. So. Yeah, it's a great time to be in the nickel game and, and have control of a nickel sulphide district like we do. But most importantly, he's also talking about localisation. So keep keep the cathode production near the mine, which is exactly what we're going to do with Echo Pro. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll have to um, tweet him and tell him we're doing exactly what he's after. We should maybe invite him to the Australian Nickel Conference. Yes. Scott, thanks very much for joining us today. Best of luck with the results and the scoping study, and we'll keep an eye out for, for the results from there, and perhaps we'll talk again before... Uh, the pre-FS comes out early in the new year. Thanks. Yeah.